Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be joined today by our Health and Human Services Secretary, Kate Walsh, and our Department of Public Health Commissioner, Robbie Goldstein. I also want to thank our partners in the legislature, including Speaker Mariano and Senate President Spilka. I also want to thank our friends in labor, particularly the Mass Nurses Association and SEIU 1199. And thank you to the Mass Hospital Association, the League, and Healthcare for All, who worked closely with us to develop a strategy that makes sense for each region. Today, I am happy to announce that Massachusetts is taking steps to save and keep operating the five remaining steward hospitals in Massachusetts. And in doing so, we are protecting access to care in those communities and preserving jobs, jobs of thousands of hardworking women and men who work at these hospitals. And let me just say at the outset, none of us wanted to be here in the first place. This is not something that Massachusetts created. It was something that was created by the greed and the exploitation of an individual, Ralph De La Torre, and members of his team. De La Torre's actions brought us to nearly the brink of collapse here in Massachusetts at all seven of the Stewart hospitals. From the outset, we have worked hard as a team to confront the reality of the situation and to work as best as we could and as quickly as we could to save hospitals, to save jobs, and preserve access to care for our residents. From the outset, the goal has been of Kate Walsh, of Robbie Goldstein, our entire team has been to save as many hospitals as possible after De La Torre and Stewart bankrupted them. I am so grateful to Kate Walsh for her experience, her leadership, her compassion, particularly in this time. And I am so grateful that she accepted my call well over a year ago to become Secretary of Health and Human Services, not knowing or expecting that something like this could happen. But there was no better person, not just for my administration, but for this state to have at the helm during this challenging time than Secretary Walsh, and I thank you for that. I also thank Commissioner Goldstein, who we're very, very fortunate to have leading DPH. Dr. Goldstein leads with compassion. He leads with sensibility. He has been working incredibly hard over the last several months. His teams have been on the ground at Stewart Hospitals, monitoring care, working to ensure access to care, the protection of patients, and the protection of communities. And he has listened and will continue to listen, along with his team and our administration, to the concerns of communities affected by Stewart's actions. But to bring us back to this moment, here's what I am very, very pleased to be able to announce. We now have reached agreements by which three highly qualified healthcare leaders will be purchasing and taking over the operations of four of these hospitals. Boston Medical Center will purchase Good Samaritan in Brockton. Lifespan will purchase Morton Hospital in Taunton and St. Anne's Hospital in Fall River. And Lawrence General Hospital will purchase both hospital campuses of Holy Family in Haverhill and Methuen. We are grateful for their partnership and their commitment to not only maintaining the quality of care, but to improving the quality of care in these communities. And I am personally so grateful that these entities are now taking over as acquirers of these hospitals. We're also grateful to the legislature, to all the members of the legislature, but particularly those representing districts whose residents have been affected by this news. We have worked with the legislative leadership to develop what we believe is a fiscally responsible financing plan to make sure we are able to finalize these deals. Which brings me to St. Elizabeth's. St. Elizabeth's also received 
a highly qualified bid from an excellent hospital operator. Unfortunately, after endless go-rounds, back and forth in negotiations, the landlord has refused to move. So as governor, I am taking action today to seize control of St. Elizabeth's through an imminent domain proceeding that will facilitate the transition of St. Elizabeth's to a responsible new owner, namely Boston Medical Center. This will make sure that the hospital continues to stay open and operating in that community. And it means that with today's news and the work that has been done, we have preserved and will keep open and operating five of the seven steward hospitals that went bankrupt. I also want to say something about Carney and Neshoba because the news today is good, is good, but not for everyone. And as governor, I understand that. The community, patients, workers in Kearney Hospital and Neshoba Valley Medical Center are rightly upset about these closures. And I want them to know that I am too. I am really upset about what Stewart did, which was to run them to the point that after an exhaustive process, unlike the other hospitals, there was no hospital operator willing to come forward with a bid to continue operations of those facilities. That's why those hospitals are set to close. It's because of Steward and because what Steward did in running them to the ground. So it's an incredibly upsetting reality. Um, know that our administration will continue to work with those communities to do the best we can in bringing an, uh, the urgency to safely transitioning care and supporting our workers. And it's why our administration has committed $30 million to keep these hospitals operating and offering care for an additional time. I want to thank our Labor and Workforce Development Secretary, Lauren Jones, and her team. They continue to be on site at both Kearney and Neshoba, providing services and connecting workers to jobs. We've met with 450 workers already, and we want to ensure that every worker finds a job and our administration won't stop until that happens. And we will continue to be in dialogue with those affected at Kearney and at Neshoba. But today is a very important day, and I wasn't sure we were ever going to see this day happen. From where we began many, many months ago with Stewart pulling the rug out from all of us in Massachusetts, um, I wasn't sure that we were going to be able to get here. I knew it was really important that we do everything that we could to get here, to find a way to save hospitals, to find a way to save jobs, to protect patients' access to care, to protect the stability of what is a fragile healthcare market here and around the country. And there have been uh, a lot of fits and starts with this. I also want to thank HHS Chief of Staff Chris Hardy for his uh, uh, tireless work. And, and hustle, and also uh, Paige Scott Reed, my chief legal counsel, for uh, our t their team's work, and also the attorney general's office with whom we worked and continue to work closely. So today, uh, I'm pleased to say we're closing the book on Stewart once and for all in Massachusetts. Good riddance and goodbye. Um, that is a good thing. It's a long time coming. We're here. It's a new chapter starting today, a new chapter for patients and residents a new chapter for our great healthcare workers, our incredible nurses, healthcare workers, all the staff, the, the people who make our hospitals actually run. And uh, I believe as well, it is not just a new chapter, but it is a better chapter in terms of what it is gonna do for patient care. And we want the very best for residents across Massachusetts. And so I'm grateful to the team uh, for working so hard to, to make this happen and know that we're going to continue to do everything we can on our team, out of our administration, to stand by patients, our communities, and our incredible health care workers. With that, um, we're happy to take any questions on topic. Yeah. 
because we don't have an operator. That's the difference, Sherman. Um, and it just goes to, to the damage that De La Torre and his team did. Um, you know, with respect to the other hospitals, they were running at, uh, in a way that other hospital systems felt comfortable coming forward and submitting bids. The state cannot run a, a hospital. Um, hospital systems have to run hospitals. And the difference here is we had five hospitals where hospital systems as acquirers came forward to take over operations. Um, that unfortunately did not happen with Carney or Neshoba. If one were to miraculously appear, that would be another thing. But where we are today, this is, this is all we can do, okay? Um, I am taking control of St. Elizabeth's. We are taking back, remember the property is owned by Apollo, um, and what is gonna happen there is the state is gonna take that property and we are gonna work to transition the hospital to Boston Medical Center, which submitted, in contrast to Carney and Neshoba, a bid to continue to operate that hospital. And what about Norwood's hospital? Where, where does that fall down? Norwood's not in the mix right now. Um, Norwood right now is under bubble wrap. Uh, as you know, it was um, in the process of construction and that was shut down many, many months ago by, um, by the lenders. And we'll see what happens uh, with Norwood at, at some point in the future. But Norwood was not providing care and my job was to make sure that hospitals that were providing care um, are, uh, are dealt with and transitioned. Um, and as you know, Norwood wasn't part of this bankruptcy proceeding because it wasn't actually defined as part of the, the property of the, of the proceeding because it wasn't an operating hospital. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you how it works. Um, today, we'll be sending what is called an offer letter to Apollo, the, the owner of, of the real estate, and um, our lo offer letter will be for $5 million, which is 4.5. the $4.5 million, which is the appropriate and fair market value of that property. And we will go forward from there with uh, a further submission um, of, a, of an order, essentially, to take that property. It's one of those things I can do. Where's that money mm -hmm. come from? Where does it money come from? Yeah, we, we're working that out right now with AF. Governor, what is the exact mm -hmm. financing plan for all the hospitals? Your press release talks about half advances, capital support, maximizing federal dollars. Can you talk about what exactly that means and how much that is that would be essential to serve in Norway? Yep, you got it. Do you want to say anything more, yeah, Secretary? You, I, you said it perfectly. Those are the three sources, and we're working with the acquirers to um, make sure that they have the funds available so that they can meet their bids um, and also begin the, the work for them starts now. And they're, they're going to be taking over these hospitals. They're going to be staffing them up, stocking them up, and making capital investments to make sure that they're safe. And that will take funds that we're working with them to make sure they have. And we're working, we've worked with ANF and with our colleagues in the legislature to identify those sources of funds. And those funds will, will, will continue over the next three years as this transition. What is our funding amount and does that need to be approved by the legislature? We, the legislature has approved the part of it that they have in the governor's budget, which is the hospital assessment. The other pieces were st are, are advances, as you said, which the legislature does not need to approve. And there's one remaining piece that we're gonna continue to talk so about. Those are not advances there are advances against the clinical care that will be offered in those in those facilities so that they have working capital mm -hmm. to run the hospitals. Governor, just a lot of questions about qualified bidding and what that actually means at Neshoba and Carney. Is there anything the state can do? I know you're saying that these were run in a way that made them unqualified for what was on the bidding hall, but is there anything the state can do that can help those hospitals become um, more eligible for a bid? In, in the bankruptcy process, the creditors qualify the bids, not the state. So we don't have a say in what's a qualified bid. This is not our determination. That's the bankruptcy court's determination. But what was wrong with these three hospitals that made them not hospitals that anyone would want to buy? It's chronic underinvestment is how I would describe it.
Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take it, Martha. Um, I'm announcing it because the people of Massachusetts deserve this information. I mean, this has been a cause of tremendous stress and anxiety for residents, for patients, for healthcare workers. And we went before a federal court today, and I am comfortable um, having been before the federal court with the representation that we have an agreement, and that's not just the state, that's all of the affected parties. We went before the court, we made that attestation, now we are in the process of finalizing, which is an agreement in principle, and as a recovering lawyer, I'll tell you, there is paperwork associated with that. But the good news is, we have an agreement. We have an agreement that's gonna save hospitals, it's gonna protect patients, it's going to protect jobs. Um, the uh, paperwork, so to speak, will get worked out in the coming days um, and will be you know, filed ap appropriately. But I'm confident, having uh, been through this process, that we are at a point where we can share this with the public. I think it's important um, that we share this with the public. And uh, I'm just really grateful to the team for working so hard. I'll cut back to you on that. Do you want to speak to that? Do you want yeah. to take that, Robbie? We hope, we hope so is the short yeah. answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as you know, separately, there is a, a deal for stewardship health, which has a lot of the physicians. But what we're hearing, not all, but many of the primary care physicians, um, many of those physicians are staying in their practices. Uh, at Kearney and Neshoba, they're staying as well. I think that's important to put out there that while the hospital may be closing, the medical office building remains open, and those physicians are providing care. There are also specialty physicians that are going to remain affiliated with the Kearney and Neshoba Medical Office building, as well as all of the other hospitals across the system. So we are working with the, those that are coming in to take on the operations to make sure that they have what they need, and that includes making sure they have physicians to provide the care. How about another question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the um, patients that make it possible, mm -hmm. and this is the transition that's going on in the city and it's been finalized yet, can people still come and go to these hospitals that will care if they need? Absolutely. We've been in these hospitals since uh, really February, actually the end of January. We've been there daily monitoring the quality of care, the access to supplies, the staffing that are in each of the hospitals. We'll remain in the hospitals through the transition for as long as we need to be there to make sure that we can guarantee for every person in Massachusetts you can walk in to St. Elizabeth's and get high quality care. Can you share mm -hmm. with the discussion of the system values? I'm sorry, what? Uh, not soon enough, but um, effectively they're they're out of the state with what we're announcing today. I mean, you know, um, the the paperwork is going to be done in terms of uh, finalizing the agreements with the new acquirers. Um, that could be days. It could be a few weeks. Um, but know that you know everybody is working just as quickly as they can to get those agreements in place. As you can imagine, it's pretty complicated um, to to. Uh, prepare these agreements, all of what's included, um, but I am confident, you know, the teams are working as quickly as possible to get that done. Um, and was there someone else? That was it? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it's, I'm sorry, what? what? Yeah, we're we're still working through some of that, but you'll see it as I say the the the, fin the financing agreement the agreements uh, will be finalized very soon. You yeah. Said you, you said What's up? It, it, it wasn't it wasn't nineteen million and it's there because it needs to meet meet the payroll. Yeah, tranche two went. Tr tr there's tranche two A and tranche two B and tranche two A went out, and so the P we could meet today's payroll. Yeah. Uh, well, I certainly hope he does. I certainly hope he will, and I know that there are investigations ongoing. I, I'm not privy to, to any of that, but certainly um, he deserves to be investigated, prosecuted, held accountable, um, as do any other actors who perpetrated this uh, this terrible harm on Massachusetts. And as I said, Steve, at the outset, I wasn't sure that we were gonna be able to see this day through. Remember, this is a major, major hospital system, not just in Massachusetts, but across the country. And in fact, in other countries, as you know, they made investments in Spain and Malta. And then 
seemingly overnight announced that they were bankrupt, out of funds. Um, Massachusetts, you know, that involved eight hospitals. That's a that was a big deal, and I wasn't sure how we were going to be able to see a way through this. I certainly knew that we had the right team in place, um, and there's been a, a, a heck of a lot of work to get to this point. And so, I just uh, am, am really pleased. I think it's a win for Massachusetts. It's a win for Massachusetts because we got rid of a really bad operator, a really bad operator. But what we have left are incredible doctors and nurses and staff who've worked and given their blood, sweat, and tears at these steward hospitals because they want to provide care. We have those human assets. They're going to continue to work. And they're going to be working with and for quality hospital operators who understand the way you provide quality care to residents and communities. So not only is this a good thing, um, one I was not sure we'd ever get here, this is a win for Massachusetts, you know, as we've come out the other side. And we've got more work to do with finalizing some agreements, uh, but, uh, but that'll happen uh, in, in short order. And uh, I appreciate again, um, and make no mistake about it, I, I carry with me every day the, the, the concerns, the heartache, um, expressed by residents about, you know, where are they going to get care? Also, um, the, the, the angst and the stress of a healthcare workforce that has already gone through a heck of a lot with COVID. And we're going to be an administration um, who continues to support our healthcare workforce, looks to work in partnership with our healthcare workforce and certainly with our hospitals um, who, um, you know, are, are among the best in the world um, at, at doing what they need to do. So. Um, that's, uh, that's the news on today. Chris is available if there are any more sort of specifics um, that folks need answers to. Okay, Governor, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to, they'll give you the details on that, okay? Do you plan to sign insurance or health bill?